Okay, sorry about that. This is the video too. This is the rest of 6-1 using the product and power rule. So let's talk about putting this together. So we have, I'm going to zoom in here. So let's look at number 11. Notice this problem. So we have, we have product, we have power of power here, and then times 4m cubed n. So we're going to simplify this first. So we're going to apply the power rule, which means power of a power. So again, you're saying 3 squared, and then m 2 times 2, n squared, times 4m cubed n. I always like to rewrite, bring everything down to one line, so then I can see everything. Now from here, I would go ahead and simplify the n 3 squared. Okay, so 3 squared, that would be 9 m to the fourth n squared, and I know this is a lot of rewriting, but okay. Now, okay, now rewrite the problem without parentheses, that's what you just did. Meaning, like, evaluate it out. Now apply the product rule. Product rule means you're just multiplying this term by this term. So now we can multiply the coefficients. 9 times 4 is 36. Now again, remember, when you're multiplying by the same base, add the exponent. So n to the fourth times m squared is going to be n to the sixth. n squared times n is going to be n cubed. Okay, here's your final answer on that one. Okay, all right, let's try this one. So again, power of a power. So you're saying 4 squared, x squared, y squared, z to the fourth times x, 6, y cubed, z cubed. Power over power, so simplify those first. Then if you want, go ahead and do 4 squared, which it won't affect because this won't have any other numbers, but 16. Now, what you could do on this one, you, I can go ahead and simplify that. 4 squared is 16. Now I could go ahead and combine these if I want. x squared times x to the 6th, add x to the 8th, y to the 5th, and z to the seventh, okay? Now typically, one thing I don't think I ever said before, but if you have multiple variables, usually they'll put them in um, alphabetical order, like m, n, and then x, y, z, they'll usually put those in alphabetical order. Okay, so now, same thing here. So there's, yeah, so a to the fourth, so I'm gonna simplify this, a to the fourth, z, you're multiplying, not adding, multiplying, z squared, times, now negative 2 to the third power, put parentheses around that, negative 2 to the third power, multiply, 3 times 3 is 9, 2 c to the sixth, then we have, now since that's on the side here, that's still going to be in the front, so that's a negative 2 cubed. Now negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is a negative 8, not negative 6, so be careful. Negative 8 a to the 13th. Now there's no b here, so it's going to be b to the 6th, c to the 8th. Okay, so now let's use this. So hopefully you get a little bit more comfortable. I'm going to do that so you can see it. A little bit more comfortable with those. Okay, so when you have a mix, simplify it out and then combine it. Okay, now we're going to find the perimeter and area. Now to find the perimeter and area, when you have just these letters, you're not going to get, okay, the perimeter is 18 or the area is 22 square units. So you are going to end up with some variables in your expression, okay? So find the perimeter and area. So first of all, perimeter of a triangle, remember your perimeter of a triangle is just distance around. So just think of what you're doing. You're saying 7, and it doesn't matter what you start with, 7x squared, or xy plus 4xy plus 3x squared. So your perimeter, distance around, you're adding. So go back to what you know about adding. The only things that we can add here are the 7xy and 4xy. So your final expression, now I'm going to put x squared first just because it's a higher exponent. So your final expression for the perimeter is 3x squared plus 11xy. That is your final answer for perimeter. That's all you can, because you don't know what x equals, you don't know y equals. You don't have enough information. They don't give you anything else. So that's your expression for the perimeter. Now area. Area of a triangle. 
And remember an area of a triangle? It's one half base times height. And the base and the height are the ones that form this right angle, okay? The one that it's perpendicular to the base. So your base is 3x squared times 4xy, and it's half of that. Now that's a multiplication that looks like subtraction. So I would multiply these first. So this is going to be your area. 3 times 4 is 12. x cubed y. And then half of that. Now the way you take half of that is you're just taking half of 12. You're not going to do half of these. You can't do that. So half of 12 is 6. x cubed y. So that is your area. And that's going to be like units squared, whatever that's going to be. Okay? You really should have parentheses around that if you do that. And then this should be units too. I should have said that. Because we don't know if it's feet, inches, whatever. But that's your final expression for the area. So 6x cubed y. You just have to think about when you're in the geometry section of it. You have to think about what you know. We'll have to add these. And the only way you can do it is to add like terms. When you're multiplying, 1 half base times height, then you can bring in what you've been doing with your multiplication. Okay? There you go.